So you just got the Pokemon with the best IVs that you're ready to EV train and make into a competitive Pokemon. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually EV train your Pokemon the best and fastest way possible. So obviously you only want to EV train a Pokemon who is ready to be EV trained. I highly recommend when you breed a Pokemon and it is at level one, you don't do any battles with it in your party until you are ready to EV train it first. Because when you battle other Pokemon, you add EVs from those Pokemon to your Riolu, which you don't want to do that. So in a way to quickly explain what EVs are, EVs are kind of like invisible stats that you can get that will boost your either HP, attack, defense, speed, special defense, or special attack. Now essentially the way EVs work is for every four EVs, you get one stat into the normal thing. So if I have four speed EVs, I will get one extra speed to my stat screen. But however, you can only have 252 per a stat. So I can have speed at a 252 EVs, and this will give me 63 more stats into speed. But you should know that you're only allowed to boost it in total. All of the EVs in total can only go up to 508, and a single stat cannot go higher than 252. So in two stats, you can have 252. Like, for example, for a Riolu that we have in a Jolly thing, we're going to have 252 into speed, and we're also going to have 252 into attack. So that has a really high boosted speed and a really high boosted attack. And then you have basically four more EV points that you can put for just one stat somewhere else. You can put it into HP or defense. It's literally just going to add one more stat. So it's 252, 252, and a a four. You can also spread those out a different way if you want to as well. Like if you want to do like a hundred, a hundred, etc, etc. So because this Riolu has never been in battle, it has zero EVs at all. It doesn't have any. Now the way you can quickly get EVs that I actually recommend, it might seem quite expensive, is by actually using the items that you use to, to increase them. Like the Zinc, the Calcium, the Iron. Now these items over here, you can see a nutritious drink for Pokemon when consumed. It raises the defense points of a single Pokemon. So I'm going to show you where you can buy these. You can see I have quite a few of them already. Now each one of these items, like if I feed one Zinc to the the Riolu, it will increase the special defense base points, the EV points, by 10. So that is 10 EVs. Now since we're aiming to get 252, that means you have to feed 26 of these, obviously because 252, that 2, you can't really get a different way unless you're going to go battle a Pokemon that gives that specific EV. You're rather just going to feed it 26 of these Zinc things to get 252 EV stats. Now the place that you're going to buy these EV boosters is here in Veilstone City. You can see where I am right over here, Veilstone City at this location. From the Pokemon Center, you're just going to go up and to the left and into the big department store. Inside the department store, you want to go up the stairs and go to the second floor. On the second floor, you can see the lady in the middle here. When you speak to her, she will be selling you these boosters for 9,800 Poké Dollars. Now that is the catch. It is quite expensive to actually buy these. And since you need 26 just to get a, a one stat to 252, it can be quite expensive. And since you need to do uh, like your, all your stats, if you're doing 26 plus 26 plus one to get the total of 508 EVs boosted, you need to buy 53 of the ones that you need. So maybe 26 calcium, 26 zinc and one carbos as an example. Now while that sounds quite simple and all, it does cost quite an arm and a leg. Now this will cost you 519,400 poke dollars. That is a big number, 519,400 poke dollars. So in order to get that money, we're going to go here to battle the old couple here at the south of Heart Home City. That is at this location over here. So Heart Home City is here. We go down the path to the south and we get near the mansion over there, this side. And here we are by the old couple who will be giving us money. But the, before we battle them, you do want to go to your Pokemon and you want to put the Riolu into a box because you don't want this Riolu actually competing in battles because it will increase its EVs. Now I'm just going to put this one over here because that's the six IV best one. And I'm going to put my my Infernape over here. Now you can see my Infernape has a item here called the Amulet Coin. I'm going to just show you that in, I believe, this screen over here, if I press X here. You can see my Infernape is holding an Amulet Coin, and this doubles all the money that you earn from battles, right? So this is great because this couple in particular over here give you 8,000 Poké Dollars every single time you battle them. And when you use the VS Seeker item, which you should link to your plus button, basically to access this, you go to your bags and you go all the way to the right side here until you can find the VS Seeker. Now you should already know this, you should know how to use this, you use the VS Seeker, and then you can battle each of these opponents, or these trainers. 
the guy in particular will send out a chantot, and when you beat this chantot, you should actually get EVs for the attack stat. But we're not really doing it that way. I'm just going to one-shot this thing, and we're going to move on. And you'll see at the end of the battle, we'll get 16,320 Poké Dollars for winning the battle, which was quite quick and quite easy. You'll see when you defeat her, she'll also give you 16,320 Poké Dollars. Now, in order to get enough money to fund the 519,400 Poké Dollars at $16,000 a battle, it's going to take you 33 battles. So you're going to have to do 33 battles here until you can get to 519,000 Poké Dollars in your thing. All you have to do is go to your bag to see in the top right corner how much money you have if you need to see. Now, while that method seems quite expensive and might take a bit of time, the other method actually takes a little bit longer depending on one thing. So the other method you can do is when you head to the battle tower, the battle tower is located right above the fight area at this location over here on the map. So when you get there and you go up the pathway up here, you can go into this building. And when you go into this building, you'll be able to speak to a lady at the counter right at the top here who will sell specific items for 10 BP, which is battle points that you earn from competing in the battle tower. And you can see here, you can buy these power bracer, power belt, power lens, power band, power anklet, power weight. Now these things, as you can see at the bottom, says it reduces speed but allows the holder's uh, maximum HP to grow more after battling. So these actually, when your Pokemon is holding them as a held item, will increase the EVs that they gain in that stat. For example, if I use the band over here, or actually let's Let's use one that makes a bit more sense, like the Power Bracer, right? This one, if a Pokemon is holding this and it does a battle with another Pokemon and it wins, it will actually increase its attack EVs by 8. So 8 points. Now doing it this method does require you to actually play 32 battles for one stat. To get one stat to 252 EVs, you have to do 32 battles with the Power Bracer on that Pokemon. And then if you want to boost the, um, let's say, the speed with the Power Anklet, you're also going to have to do 32 battles again holding this item. So, and then obviously with for the one lost EV, you can just carry something else here. Uh, so that... So in general, that makes it 65 battles. That is 32 plus the 32 plus the extra one for 65 battles by increasing your EVs eight, like eight EVs at a time while battling Pokemon. Sure, you can find places like where you battle the Magikarp and you can fight like six of them in a row. You can you can do that a lot quicker because obviously you can kill Magikarp quite quickly. It's not by actually completing the battle, but it's actually by defeating each Pokemon that you well defeat. So if you fight the dude who has the six Magikarps at the, the fishing location, you should be able to get like the eight EVs for each Magikarp that you kill. But it will still, however, take some time to get those 65 Pokemon defeated. Now, if you're wishing to go the power method where you're holding those power items on your Pokemon, there is a way to increase it by double the effectiveness so that it only takes you 16 battles per each type of Pokemon for each item, and then 16 on the other one, and then a final one. So for a total of about 33 battles, just like you would for farming the money, you just have to do 33 battles, 16 with one power item, 16 with another power item, and then one with the final power item. But the only catch is your Pokemon needs to have the Pokerus virus. Virus. You know, you'll know when your Pokemon has the Pokerus virus when it has this little kind of like pink skull with a cross through it on your Pokemon over here like I have on this Ditto that I got traded. Now, if you have any Pokemon with a Pokerus virus, you can actually put it in your party. And as you're playing and battling, I believe the Pokemon, the Poke virus is supposed to like um, transfer onto the other Pokemon in the party. I actually haven't used this method at all. So I just know that it's supposed to spread within your party if you have the Pokemon with the virus in your party. So instead of eight EVs per battle with the, with the power items, you're going to be getting 16 EVs. However, this does not work with the EVs that you get from the booster items. So the things like Kelsey, and stuff like that, they still stay at 10. They don't go to 20, they stay at 10. Now, if your Pokemon already has EVs and you've already been doing battles with it, and like, let's say it's a shiny and something and you haven't even realized at this point, you want to go to some of your rare, like, berries over here. For example, like the Tomato, the Grepa, the Hondu, Quellet, uh, the Kelpsy, and the Pomeg. These ones will actually lower the EVs in certain things. So if I feed a Pomeg berry, for example, to my Infernape, it will actually lower its HP EV points by 10. So it's the opposite of a booster. It just minuses 10 EVs from that. So if Infernape, like this Infernape over here, actually uh, raised, so that one is actually EV trained. But the one that I started with at the beginning of the game, because it played through the game and it defeated such random amounts of Pokemon, its EVs were like, you know, like 50, 70, 60, 80, you know, all spread out across all the different stats depending on the Pokemon that you find. 
So if you want to reset those ones, you will have to feed about like 10 of each of these to your Pokemon until the EV points or their, yeah, basically their EV points in each stat is reduced to zero so that you can EV train them properly in the stat that you wish. It is a bit hard and you do need to keep track of the numbers though. And that is everything I have to tell you in this video about how to EV train your Pokemon for the stats. And thank you so much for watching.